Hi guys, uh, time for another one of my bargain store projects. It's actually Halloween tonight, so I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to do anything in between answering the door every five minutes. But what I fancy doing is making one of those bifilar um, pancake coils to do some sort of magnetic um, toy with. I've got two options. I've got this coil of speaker wire and I've got this craft wire. So I'm not quite sure which one to do first. I quite fancy having to go with these just to see if it's actually insulated and whether I can do anything with it. So we'll see. There's people at the door at the moment. I'm going to have to make up some sort of former to wind the wires in. So I'll have to have a little think. I did see a video on YouTube, a chap had made rather a nice um, former out of clear plastic or perspex or something. So I was thinking I might use this. Um, again, bought this in a bargain store for a pound. It's a photo frame. It's just clear plastic. So I might use that cut some discs out of it um, to make a former. So we'll see how I get on with that. I've taken the packaging off and you see it's just a couple of well a bit of clear plastic bent into a shape. So I'll drill a hole in it and cut a circle out or two circles out. I've absolutely no idea how big I need to make this disc because I'm just going to play it by ear and use two of these so that it's by filar as in two wires. Um, but I've no idea how ma how big those will be when they're spread out a, thi a single thickness. So I'll just make this as big as I can for now and then I'll know better next time. Okay, the plan so far, I you probably can't see it at all but I've actually marked out a disc on there with my compass. I'm going to drill a hole in the middle. Uh, the idea is I'll be able to put a bolt through to hold it tight and possibly put it on the end of a drill to spin it to actually wind the wires up gently. Uh, I haven't quite figured out how I'm actually going to cut this out though. I haven't got any suitable tools for doing that but we'll find out in a minute. I'll drill a hole straight through the middle anyway so I can bolt it together so that when I cut it I get two discs the same size. Well that was fairly challenging. Did it all with that saw. Need to smooth the edges a little bit but that's, that's not bad. I've got to do a couple of other bits to it next. Uh, the guy whose video I saw, if I can find it again, I'll put a link to it at the end of the um, at the end of my video. He had some slots cut in it so that you could put a little bit of um, glue through to hold the coil flat before you actually took the former off it. And then once you take the former off it, you give it a bit more glue to seal it. So I've got to figure out if I can put some slots in there of some sort. I have no idea how to do that. I've got a little engraving tool. I don't know if that will cut slots for me. I'll have a look. All right, I've just scored some lines on there. I don't know if we can see them at all. So I should see if I can cut out some slots. Not the right the way across. They have to be fairly close to the middle. And the idea is once you've built your coil, you just dab some glue or nail polish or something like that through there just to hold the coil still while you take the former apart. Well, that's one slot cut with my little engraving tool. It's actually melting the stuff that's going through because the little engraving bits is getting so hot. I think that'll do for the purpose I'm doing. 
we'll find out when we come to use it. Right, that's four slots cut. So, the next thing to do will be to try and make one of these coils. I need to put a tiny spacer between the two discs and then um, oh, well, I'll need to drill a little bit of a gap just there to let the wires come out one way in the centre and then we'll see what we can do. Right, for my first attempt I think I probably will try winding it by hand um, rather than trying to attach it to an electric motor just so I can see how it progresses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a cardboard disc in first a, a tiny little cardboard washer as well which I'm hoping is about the thickness of the two wires and they're going to go inside there, bolt through the middle and then I'm going to try turning it by hand and just see how I get on. I've got me two wires, I've fed them through my little slot there. I shall put some tape on just to hold them still while I'm actually doing the winding. Right, I've started winding it by hand and I can already see that I haven't got it quite right. But I shall wind it all on and see if we get any um, any magnetism out of it. Right, that's wound on the entire little bobbins of wire. Uh, quite surprised how small the end result is, but I think that's probably because I've pulled it a bit tight and some of it's doubled up a bit. But We'll see what we can do, see if I can put some um, nail varnish or something in there just to hold it so that I can then get it apart, take the former off and then glue it all in together. Well, there's a turn up for the books. Um, you'd think after 40 odd years of marriage I'd know my wife. <laughs> just nipped out and asked her if I could have some nail varnish. And she doesn't have any. She hasn't had any for years. Well, I knew she didn't wear it, but I thought all women kept some in supply just in case. Well, I'll have to improvise. I have to go and find some varnish or something from the garage. Right, no idea if that'll work. Getting a bit desperate here. Managed to find some quick dry varnish, wood varnish, down in the garage. So I'll put a little bit in each of my slots. I'll leave that to dry. I might even give it another coat. And then I'll take the former off and give it a few more coats all over. What I'm planning to do, or at least one of my ideas, is to see if I can incorporate this into a coaster, one of those things you put your drinks on. Um, to have a magnetic effect in the coaster, or at least for the coaster to have a magnetic effect on something else. Just depends how strong this is, how powerful it is. So, we'll see. Okay, I've taken the plastic formers off and instantly learned a lesson. I had the centre taps coming through the top former, that was a bad move because as soon as you lift the top former off it tends to pull the wires with it which means it started pulling the centre coils out. If I'd have pushed those wires through the back like I'm showing it now it would have been easier to hold them in place when I took the top former off. So the next one I do those wires will be coming out the back not the front. Other than that, it uh, more or less worked. The varnish that I've put on there has held the coil in place when I've taken the 
former apart and I'm just putting a few more layers over the rest of it to hold it all in place. Right, I've just been gently heating that plastic picture frame again. The, I used the picture frame to cut those circles out for the former and I just thought it actually melted quite easily when I was cutting the slots in it. So I thought, I wonder if I can just re-bend it. Which I've done. Um, I just straightened out one of the existing bends, so that's why that one's nice and neat. And then that's the bend I've done entirely of my own work, which is, as you can see, a little bit wrinkly. But it occurred to me that Although I'd like to hide my pancake coil, coil away, um, I want you to be able to see what I've done. So if I use this clear plastic instead and mount a, a rotor in there with the pancake coil underneath, um, you'll be able to see all the work. And then later on, if I want to hide it away, I'll have to do that separately. So this should be the... Um, what to call it. <laughs> Chassis, I suppose. Um, to actually hold my pancake coil on the bottom and some sort of magnet on a rotor arm there uh, to be powered by the, or repelled, by the pancake coil. Right, another example of a lack of forward planning on my part. Um, I didn't think to check those wires uh, to see what they were actually made of. And I now realise they're, they must be copper coated steel or something because my neodymium magnet is actually fully attracted to my pancake coil without any power going through it. In fact if I dab a little bit of power on it. It does react, but uh, nothing like enough to actually make a, an interesting, um, what can we call it? Well I was basing it on one of those solar movers, so I was just going to get it to rock backwards and forwards, but as you can see uh, this is not going to work at all because it's just too too well attracted to that base. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to swap to this wire, which is still must have some um, iron content in it, because it's just very slightly attracted to it. But if I swap over my wires, So we're going to have to take a slight change of direction now. Right then, this is the final article. Well, when I say final, it could really do with a lot more tuning. Uh, but at the moment, it's about as simple as you can possibly get. Um, what we've got down the bottom there is that coil of speaker wire with a neodymium magnet suspended above it that is oscillating and the way it's oscillating is incredibly simple. If I turn it around all we've got there is a bit of a dog leg on the axle which is touching a wire and as soon as the magnet moves at all, it breaks the contact and it drops back again. Uh, the other wire is just wrapped around the copper axle. So that's what we've got. We've got a vibrating flower. Powered very simply by a coil of wire and a contact that's 
breaking as soon as the magnet moves. Now with a bit of effort I could probably trim that so it swings significantly further. But I've run out of time again on this project. I started it last night when it was Halloween night and didn't finish it. So I've just done a, a quick fix on it tonight just so I can get the video up and running. So there's no real circuitry involved. It's a, well, technically it's a bifiler coil because I've used both wires of the speaker wire. Uh, the inside of one coil is connected to the outside of the other. So the circuitry goes in, actually it goes in this way, round the coil, out the middle, back out to the other coil, in again, out the middle, and then up to this contact, through the contact, out this piece of wire, and off to power. So that's power in to the coil, through the coil twice, out on the contact, make and break contact, out onto power again. And that's it. That has got to be pretty simple. I must say, with a bit more effort I could actually get a better swing out of that, but uh, I'm not going to fiddle with it anymore tonight. Okay, what did we learn tonight? Well, one thing we learnt was that craft wire that I was going to use, or did use, uh, it must be coated steel or something. It's quite springy wire, and once I'd made my bifilar coil, pancake coil, um, unfortunately the magnets are actually attracted to the coil, whether it's got current going through it or not. So it must be a steel wire or certainly a high iron content in it because it's attracted to the magnet. So using my formers that I made, my plastic formers, that worked. I was able to make that coil out of it. Um, one thing I did note was I should have brought the, the centre wires out of the back rather than the front because there was a problem when I was trying to glue it all together. But that worked. The um, varnish I used to seal the coil and make it all into one piece, that worked. But it's a steel coil which is no good when you're trying to play with magnets. So we did a quick change of plan. We used the speaker wire that I got here from a bargain store. That was a pound for 10 metres of speaker wire. So I've done nothing to it, I've actually left it in the packet, got the wires out of it, connected them up, and we've now got our oscillating uh, flower, just through a very simple switch. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learnt something from it. As in, <laughs> what not to do. Don't use that craft wire if you're going to play with magnets.